Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another amazing episode of Talent Takeover Unfiltered, where we have another special guest with us, Gregory Frank. How are you doing? Good. How are you guys? Uh, awesome. Taylor, how are you doing? Doing good. Doing good. Happy to have you on, Gregory. I'm happy to be on. Thank you for having me. Nice. So, uh, so, and I'll let you do your own quick little intro, but um, I've known, I should say, of Gregory for a long time from engineer to recruiter over the course of these years. And so we've been, uh, you know, kind of in the industry for about the same amount of time. Uh, but the subject will be on, you know, struggling to find a job and how you really like keep it positive. Um, because I think there's tons, not I think, I know there's hundreds of thousands of recruiters right now and, ta- and people just in talent that you know, are having a really rough go because companies haven't learned uh, their lesson the last time. So Gregory, please tell us just a, a little bit about yourself. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I started my career um, as a computer engineer. Uh, I went to UC Santa Cruz and got a degree in computer science with the idea of going into video game programming and really being able to build the next like Call of Duties or, you know, like big budgeted games. And um, I did that for about... I want to say about 12 years um, and then kind of decided to kind of try my hand at like engineering management and leadership and trying like, what is it like outside of the video game industry? <laughs> and so um, I got a job as a lead engineer, then worked my way up to engineering manager. Uh, and then in 2017, I kind of got laid off again uh, from, from an engineering company, which sadly is part of the industry. Uh, and at that point, I kind of made a, a life decision to kind of go from being an engineer to being a recruiter. Um, it took me about six months to find my first recruiting job. And then I worked my way up uh, to now a lead technical recruiter. Um, and unfortunately, I find myself also uh, uh, currently in between jobs. But mm-hmm. um, I'm kind of excited for my next opportunity uh, to work as, a, as another either, you know, kind of recruiting manager, lead recruiter, or even as a senior technical recruiter for some amazing company. Welcome to Talent Takeover Unfiltered. When it comes to working hard and keeping it real, we know our shit. Self-care, happiness, inner peace, and time. I'm Brianna Rooney, and this is Taylor Bradley. Hey, y'all. And we have thrived in chaos and turned it into an art form. So Taylor, what are we doing here today? We're here to give you a raw, under the hood view of all things recruiting and finally give credit where credit is due to a long underrated industry that's full of quote unquote experts. All right. Well, then let's take this show to the road. So I have a quick question for you because I think this is really applicable for a lot of our um, listeners. So you said that you went from being an engineer to a recruiter. It took you about six months to find mm-hmm. your role. So what was that interview process like? What what did you, did you have to do your resume differently to show the transferable skills? Like what was your approach to switching from engineering to recruiting from a job application and interviewing standpoint? Oh, that's a, yeah, that's an excellent question. Um, yes, I did have to change my resume. Uh, so basically... I did have to change my resume, I would say like about 50% of it uh, to, to really emphasize what was related to recruiting that I had done as an engineer. So things like reviewing resumes, interviewing candidates, um, going to GDC and kind of running a career booth where I volunteered to be one of the people at the career booth to, in, you know, to kind of introduce the company and yourself to like potential candidates and get like a stack of resume like this high. Um, and I went on like, and it, uh, for example, the recruiting team would invite me to go to DigiPen University career fairs and kind of do a presentation. And so all of that I would emphasize in my role, uh, you know, kind of when you put all the skills and all the things you've done at the very top and I would bold it. So that way it would come out either in a, like ATS system or a reviewer reviewing the resume all the way up to like, as an engineering manager, it was my responsibility to interview, hire and choose who's going to be on my team, essentially like a hiring manager. Um, and so I'd really emphasize that in the resume and I would, uh, take out kind of the roles that weren't as applicable, but put those on my LinkedIn and just kind of put a note saying like my full experience is on my resume on LinkedIn, but this is my highlight resume, uh, and also change my objective. So my objective would be kind of to, to get my first technical recruiting job. Um, and I had, and I and st- still to this day, I, I kind of have a modified resume to kind of show off my recruiting abilities and not my engineering really as much, but also to show that, yes, I have this experience that's unique and that is very helpful to the job. Have you ever thought about going back to engineering? I'm just going to ask that same thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
How, I thought about it, yes, absolutely. I mean, obviously, uh, it's something that I was passionate about. Uh, but I love my job as a recruiter uh, so much more that um, it's not enough to kind of want me to go back. It's, it's enough that, like, I want to be involved in, like, for example, contract work or if I'm at a company and they're doing a technical interview. Like, I do want to see the code and be like, oh, can I check out the code of this candidate? I'm really excited to see, like, how good they were. Um, and then be able to get that trust from the hiring manager to look at the code and be like, oh, wow, this person is a great engineer or Ooh, this person is not so great. <laughs> like code submission was, was really bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, cause I'm thinking about like, as we're talking about the subject of struggling to find a job and how you stay positive. And so is it harder to find a job as an engineer or as a, as a recruit? Hmm. Um, I think right now it would be a little bit more difficult for me uh, to find a job as an engineer. Oh, sorry. To get a job as an engineer. To find a job as an engineer is definitely easier, um, mostly because right now the market really needs software engineers uh, across every industry, every kind of like gaming, non-gaming industry. Uh, recruiting, I feel, has a lot more adaptable skills um, for industry, for like non-tech, tech, you know, they can go to like, for example, healthcare or mm-hmm. go into like lawyer recruiting because uh, the basic skills are very applicable. Um And sometimes it's actually useful, like when I was looking for a recruiting job to do some contract work in your profession. Like, so I had an engineering contract for 30 days uh, with the potential to be converted full time before I even nailed my first interview. (laughs) And so I got hired by Dink, um, which I'm sure a lot of people have heard of. uh, And I was working as a contractor for IGN uh, because I needed to get income coming in. And it was something that I could get a job quickly since I was an engineer. Um, but I made it very clear to the organization, like, look, I'm really trying to become a recruiter. Um, I love, I love your company. I would love to do the contract work. I'll put my heart and soul into it, but, um, realistically, like this is my goal. And so they were totally open to that. And they said, let's reevaluate in 30 months. If you're still looking for a recruiter job, we'll respect it. If you want to come on board here and we want to convert you, we'll do that. And so we had that conversation 30 months in. I was like, I got my first recruiter job. I'm really excited about it. And they're like, okay, cool. Let's extend your contract one week then. And then you can go on to the, to the new uh, opportunity. I love that. I love that you differentiated between finding a job and getting a job. I thought that was really interesting. So, um, because we, I know how Brianna meant it and positioned the question, but there definitely is a difference. It's a lot easier to, in this current market, find a job um, in you said engineering, but to get a recruiting mm-hmm. job is more difficult. Um, so going back to, you know, what this episode's about, um, how do you stay positive in your job search? I think the key uh, to staying really positive is just is really believing in yourself, right? So um, interviews can be really, um, co- I would say confidence killing when you're getting rejected from your resume to when you go to an interview and, I've even had people when I was first looking, for example, a recruiting job, tell me that I wasn't being genuine, and I was being disingenuous and I really didn't want a recruiter job. I just wanted to find a job and get one, mm-hmm. uh, which really hurt, right? Because it makes you kind of go back and go, hmm, do I really want this job or are they right? Like, am I just looking for something because I'm unemployed? Uh, what they don't know is that you're doing things like I was doing things like like Uber, right? Driving to, just yeah. to get the income in, uh, doing things like contract work, doing favors for uh, family members like that were maybe running a business that wanted, you know, someone to come in for a day or something to help them out. So I was getting income that was allowing me to pay my rent and to stay afloat. Um, and then the, so that, so really it's just surround yourself with people that, that, you know, will support you. Um, so some people, they, 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 they can love you, but they're not the greatest at supporting you. Right. <laughs> like, <for everyone's, laughs> you that? like <clears throat> So the key is to have the people that will, support you. So I surrounded myself with like all my friends who basically kept telling me like, no, no, you can do this. Like you really want to do this and you're choosing the right thing. Like I've known you for 20 years, 10 years, whatever. Um, you're a very outgoing person. You're very social. You talked about this for many years. Like you're doing the right thing. Um, and that really helped me boost my confidence, but also reassured me that I was doing the right thing. Um, and that I was choosing a job that I'm going to be happy with versus choosing a job that's going to pay me a lot of money, but I'm going to be miserable type of thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I got to re-say your line again, because I was like, totally got the chills, like instant, like <laughs> watery eyes. Because like, you know, people can love you, but they don't always support you. 
Right. <laughs> and like, that's, that's so crazy. I remember when, you know, I opened up, you know, my businesses, it's like, really, you want to do that again? Or, you know, is there, there really a market for that? Or, are, you know, it's like, it, it was like big question and question. And at the time I convinced myself, oh, they just love me and want to make sure that I'm making the right decision. But mm-hmm. then very quickly, I was like, no, you just weren't supporting me. Like, just like want, like, like what I do or just like be like, yes, go you. Well, and on the other side of that, you both bring up a great point too of it's so people can love you, but not support you. It's like when you're going through those tough times, I think a question could be, how can I help you? You know, Mm -hmm. not by not just being like, how can I help you mentally, emotionally, but professionally, how can I help you? Can I introduce you to people? So I find that that's really, even when you're struggling, you're going through difficult times, whether you're unemployed or, you know, your business is having difficult times. It's like the people that you know, or maybe the people you vent to and know your struggles. It's rare that you get asked that question, even though they may love you and you know they absolutely love the shit out of you. How can mm-hmm. I help you from a professional standpoint? Yeah, sometimes it's also realizing that maybe the loved one can't help you, right? They may not know about the industry you're in or they may not understand why, because uh, this happened to me where you have a four-year degree, you know, you put 12 years into something and they're like, why are you going to another profession that doesn't need a four-year degree? And you're like, well, you don't really know what this profession needs. Like, you know, it's like, yeah. I know what it is. So I look at resumes, I look at job descriptions, I talk to people that are in that, that, that field. Um, and my dad was a recruiter uh, when he was, a, when he was still alive. Oh. And so like, it was just something I grew up with knowing these recruiters and people that were headhunters. And like, mm-hmm. it was just like, yeah, that this seemed like a fun job that I can do. And um, you know, it's like, and so re also realizing kind of why you're going into it, like what your original goal was and just really embracing that helps yeah. keep it positive because it helps remind you like, yeah, this is, I'm making the right move. I'm doing the right thing. I just think as recruiters, we all know people that know people mm-hmm. that need jobs filled. So it's like, ask, you know, how can I help you? Can I introduce you to somebody? You know, I agree with you completely. They may not know the ins and outs, but I think also too, just saying that. So that's really interesting to me that, and I've had this, we talk about it, Brianna, and I've talked about it even with regards to LinkedIn, like you can have these big LinkedIn networks, but then when it actually comes down to it and you need something and you, it's like, you really need to leverage that networking, which is what that whole platform is for. It's like, where, where is everybody? You know, it doesn't, Mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter how many posts you put up or how many followers you have, all of that. That's probably a whole nother subject and topic. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, you're absolutely correct. Right. right? It's like your network is going to be your biggest ally. Right. Uh, For me, like reaching out to people that even I just work with as an engineer. uh, And I said, Hey, you know, I'm looking for a recruiter job. I really would love to work with you again. Uh, We had a great rapport. Um, Like, what can you do? And people that were my direct reports at a company called Uyala, um, they all kind of put my resume in at their HR people and said, you know, this guy is a, is a good engineer. He was a, he was a great person. He would be a great fit here. He's looking to go into recruiting. And that ironically, uh, one of my colleagues sent, told a recruiter that I was looking for an engineering job mm-hmm. and that recruiter called me and they were from Bing. And I told them like, actually I'm looking more for a recruiting job. And that started the conversation that ultimately lent, landed me the job at Bing. Yeah, it's just all about talking. So that's another thing. So when you talk about um, surrounding yourself, you know, with people who support you, though, is that like, were you able to do that because you were very openly talking about what you need and what you wanted? Yes. Because I don't think a lot of people do that. Yes. Um, I would constantly, I mean, like, I, I am lucky. I have a really close knit of friends that really support me and I support them. Um, and so just talking to them, like literally on the phone, like going, oh, man, I'm losing confidence. Like, I'm, I'm currently in the market. I, I tried to find like an engineering job. I really don't want to do it though. And they're like, well, you want to do recruiting you keep talking about it. Like, go do it. You know, and I'm like, it's yeah. really not that easy. They're like, we know, we know how hard it is, but like, you got to start somewhere. <laughs> and so it was just getting that reassurance from somebody who knows me well, you know, like that really knows who I am as a person telling me like, no, you can do this. Like we got confidence in you. We, we support you. We, we're going to help you. I even had friends offer to give me money to help pay my rent, to give me a loan if I needed it, like if I was running out. And they're like, just do it. Just go out there and find your job. That's That's a good group of people. Yeah, it really (laughs) is. So as going back to like your, your job search for our listeners, what tips could you give people in how you go about your job search on the day, on a day-to-day basis? Because we all know that, like you said, it can be a confidence killer. The interview process, the 
a application process can be a confidence killer. And I, I'm, I know probably doing it all day long. It's just not realistic, mm -hmm. you know, eight hours a day, like, mm -hmm. you know, s uh, approaching it like a job. I'm going to sit here right. and apply for jobs eight hours a day. It's just not <laughs> mentally realistic and it's draining. So how do you break that out? How do you do that? Yeah. I mean, it's definitely mentally straining and it is definitely a full-time job, like, you know, to yeah. find a new job, but it shouldn't be approached as one in my opinion. Like okay. you should, you should like set blocks, like almost like you're setting meetings on your calendar of like, okay, yeah. for this hour, I'm going to look for jobs for this um, block of time, like, and make it a short block of time. It doesn't have to be like eight hours. It could be like two hours. It could be three hours. It could be one hour, um, it could be 30 minutes. Right. Um, Cause jobs don't come up every second, right? Like, yes, it's possible a job will come up and you'll miss it, but it'll be up for at least eight hours before they take it down. If they get a lot of applications, like, I applied, for example, to Insomniac Games in January. Uh, they had just posted it. I applied to it. And then eight hours later, they took it down because they had 1,500 applications. Oh, um, wow. And now I have an interview with them on March 7th. So it took, it took in a long time for them to go through those resumes, right? Figure out who they want to interview uh, and let people know, like, we're interested. Mm. Um, and so the, the key there is, like, don't kind of put yourself in a situation where you're constantly staring at the job search, right? Like, because that's just going to be debilitating and don't like get like a, no news is good news as they say right like if you haven't heard from a company consider that good news even if that company is like i'm gonna ghost these candidates and we don't care about them like right we just want to email the people that we care about like you don't know if that's the case or if they're just really really overwhelmed and swamped and they're trying to get through that resume and you're just on that list like you're going to be on that short list you just don't know when or how so it's just like the ones you haven't heard from keep the positive that you're going to get here from them and follow up, you know, if you can, like look for the work emails on LinkedIn. We all have the, the tech, the tools, right? And the, and, the, and the skills to find people's emails as we do for a living. <laughs> and so like find someone's email, work, especially work email, right? If you can't, if you can only find their personal email, send them a, a, a nice friendly note saying, I'm so sorry to bother you on your personal yeah. email. I couldn't find your work email, but I applied for this job. I'm just curious if there was any updates, right? Make it positive, make it friendly. Uh, people will respond. If they don't respond, if you still get zero response, that could be a red flag. That could be that company maybe is not so great with their recruiting. And if you do get an interview, that's your opportunity to really shine, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I give the candidates the white glove team in. I get back to them within 24 hours, no matter how many candidates I have. And so you can use all this to kind of really make yourself seem exceptional, right? Because that, yeah. this is not the norm. You don't compare it. You don't go, oh, well, you guys haven't talked to me in like a month. Like, what's up with that, right? Like, <laughs> you yeah. simply say like, what you do and they will automatically click in their head like, oh, okay, that's what we need. We need someone who can get back to Canada's quickly. They can do high volume. They can really turf through these resumes quickly. Uh, and then the other thing is really kind of occupy your mind. So like, for example, for me, when I'm looking at job applications, I might have my computer open, like, you know, on my email for alerts from LinkedIn or Glassdoor, but I may be watching Seinfeld in the background or MasterChef or Hell's Kitchen, you know, something that, that will yeah. put a smile on my face that will entertain me. Uh, or play a video game, you know, for a couple hours. Like, okay, on Tuesday, I'm not going to look for any jobs. I'm just going to play video games, right? Like, I'll read a book. I'm going to watch a movie. Something to occupy your mind so you're not just on that, like, constant, like, oh, my God, I need a job, I need a job, I need a job, kind of like mode. Um, and then, like, just make sure you, like, you know, and if you do need a job, like, that desperately, like, you're, okay, unemployment is not that much. I'm running out of, you know, uh, income. I'm sole provider for my family. There are lots of avenues to get money. Right. I mean, I know there's some people that do GoFundMe's or some people that have done like um, it's kind of like, you know, kind of just reaching out to their network and saying, hey, anybody willing to like help me this month? I mean, I can't meet my rent. But really, you could just get a job like anywhere and, and and just make it very clear in the beginning, like you're looking for your permanent job, but you're willing to do, I don't know, work at McDonald's. Right. Like it's like yeah. there's no job beneath you, essentially, once yeah. when you're in that situation, just do what you can to keep your mind positive that you're going to find your job. And so take away the things you're worried about. If you're worried about getting an income, do something temporarily to get that income and then focus on, yes, I'm going to find my, my new job. So like right now I'm doing some side contract work for um, some people that I know that are kind of small startups that just need a little bit of help working mm -hmm. part time after hours. Um, and that's just so I can keep like money coming in. So that way I don't have to worry about, you know, just my bank account and just like unemployment. Is it enough to do like pay my rent and do full-time jobs? Well, of course not, right? Like that's just, that wasn't my goal was not to find that job, but I could, 
I absolutely could um, if I wanted to change professions again, <laughs> but I don't really want to, right? I want to stick with recruiting. I kind of want to do it. And so that's just simply to make it easier for me to keep the internet going, to keep, and also no taxes. There's a lot of things you can write off in taxes while you're doing your job search. Uh, for example, uh, my tax uh, person was telling me that like, if you go to a class, for example, to increase your skill set, that is a tax write-off, especially for your job search. And so talk to your accountants or ITAs or turbo taxes, whatever, just find out what is write-offable in taxes that you can do to increase your skills while you're looking for a job. And also just kind of really put yourself out there, apply for any and every job. It doesn't matter if you're qualified or not. If you see a head of talent job and you're a junior recruiter, you're not gonna get it, but apply for it because that company might be go, oh, we actually do need a junior recruiter. We don't have it advertised, but this person's resume is really impressive. And, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, obviously you want to be realistic. You don't want to apply for like VIP or director or whatever. That's like way, way above your skill set. But like, even if it's a title above or two titles above, it's good to kind of still put yourself out there because you never know what they're looking for. You never know. Even if the job description is really, really intense, you don't know what they really want, <laughs> right? So it's yeah. best to kind of just try because you have nothing to lose and you have everything to gain. Well, but couldn't you lose more confidence? Because like we were saying, like if people aren't getting back and they're just rejecting your resume after resume after resume, and you're mm -hmm. kind of putting yourself in this position of like very unlikely situation that they would want you. I mean, it, would, would that be a confidence kill? Uh, it, well, it could, yes, in theory it could be. But if you look at it like, I know I'm not getting that job, but I may get a job at that company through this avenue, or I might just simply get a connection, right? Like, and then that opens your network up even more. Okay, so, so like you're thinking long game exactly long game not short game and so like um i've applied to many jobs and then i go on linkedin i look for who's the hiring managers right mm -hmm. for that job and then i'll add them as a linkedin network if they add me then i know like okay at least they're checking their linkedin and they i look at they oh they have five thousand contacts mm -hmm. so now those five thousand contacts become second contacts for me mm -hmm. and so when i post something on social media like linkedin and say hey i'm looking for a new job i'm really open to a new opportunity or they're doing a search for a recruiter that's open to work, my my profile now shows up, right? Because LinkedIn has only the first, second, and, and third contacts that really kind of get drawn, you know, to your uh, LinkedIn recruiter search. And so it's re that's why it's really important to keep networking um, and doing it in small batches. I mean, like, don't do it every day. Don't do like a hundred director of recruiting roles when you're not qualified, right? It's more like do one or two at a company that you really, really like. So if you really want to work for Microsoft, for example, right, and they have like only the talent of like uh, oh head of talent open, well just apply, see what happens, and then um, if they say no, look at who what the person was that was you know part of that process, add them on LinkedIn, send them a nice note, say thank you so much for considering my resume, I appreciate you know you guys taking the time to respond to me, and who knows they might go well you know what that person was really nice and polite when I when we were kind of looking for head of talent now we really need some senior recruiters or mid-level recruiters or engineers like maybe we should reach out back to that person because you're now on their in their mind whereas before they didn't know who you were yeah i think it's a good best practice though if somebody's applying to multiple jobs at a company or they're applying to a, a job that you know they may not meet the qualifications for to give you know either a, do a transferable skills doc which is something that mm -hmm. we have a service we provide here to show kind of why you think you could be a good fit for that role or, um, you know, highlight that on your resume, because I know that back in the day, it used to be like, oh, you're seeing this person's name again. And the, the perception that we had as recruiters, though, was that they're not even reading the job description because you're yeah. not mm -hmm. qualified at all. And so it actually had the, the negative um, impact mm -hmm. that we're talking about. So I think um, to do what you do, I absolutely like I support that. And I think obviously times have changed. I just think it would be an added benefit for our listeners to know that you need to express why you feel you're qualified for that role throughout that application process. So they don't just think, okay, this person doesn't even read the jobs. They're just applying for everything. They're kind of like spamming us. Oh yeah. I, I don't mean to imply that you apply for like multiple roles at the same company. I mean, like if, if let's say, one company only has one role open that you mm -hmm. really want to work for that company. And yes, I agree that you should keep a cover letter as well and say why you're applying for that role. So you can even say, I know I don't have the exact years of experience that you guys are looking for. I know I'm not uh, you know, head of talent right now, but I'm very really interested in your company. And this is why I think I can do the job. Yes. This is why I feel like I'm qualified 
for this role. Because you know inherently, like, yeah, you don't meet the job description, but they don't know what you're capable of, right? They just know, like, what your resume says. Yeah. And if that nets you an interview, then great. Like, right, you can talk about yourself. You can you can close the job, so to speak, right? Uh, and But if you don't get an interview, like, that's why you've done that follow-up. Like, no, just saying thank you so much for, you know, re reviewing my resume. Uh, I'm sh I know I didn't get this. I wasn't qualified for this role. But if you think of any mid-level senior recruiter roles or whatever role that you're really qualified for, please keep me in mind. And I have found that majority of, of recruiters will, will respond positively. Yeah. I like that yeah. follow-up approach. I think in, in general, people want to help, um, especially <laughs> yeah. right now. I think, and, and I've seen a switch. I would love to know um, your thoughts. So like even a few months ago, I felt like no one would get back to you. No one in talent would get back to you. No one wanted to reach out. Now all of a sudden the sky is falling and I've got all sorts of people reaching out to me and being like, hey, do you know someone here, dude? I, I'm looking at, you know, and it's like now it feels more like how it used to be where we all networked and respected each other. Whereas I felt like the last year and a half, people were just kind of shitting on you. Just be like, oh, it's okay. I'm too busy for that. Like, I'll never respond to you if I'm too busy. Because we were like, hot. People were getting paid 40, 50K over, of, you know, normal salaries. And so, yeah, it's it's definitely an, a different time um, mm -hmm. for sure. Like, are, are you feeling that as well? Absolutely. Um, when I first started my search kind of in January, um, and also I, I was like to give you a pulse of the market in December because I was, I was thinking of like, what is out there, you know, oh my God, these layoffs are happening. It's scary. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. what if I get laid off? And then sure enough, I did. <laughs> uh, and so I definitely noticed that like people are, are very much supportive right now. Like I'm seeing yeah. daily posts on LinkedIn from random strangers just saying, Hey, there's these three recruiter jobs available. There's these software engineering roles available. Hey, who's looking for a job? I would love to help. Um, another thing I, I, I've done that I think is very useful is joining either discord or Slack groups. Oh, yeah. specifically ones that are either alumni from companies you used to work for they're industry related so like there's some that i that, that are like game developer slack groups and they post opportunities all the time and even on there like in the beginning people didn't respond to direct messages right they were kind of just like oh yeah you're looking for a job so is the rest of the market <laughs> uh but now it's like they respond right away like within 24 hours they're like oh yeah yeah i don't know if there's any jobs but if you see any on their website please let me know like I'll be happy to put you in as a referral, even though I don't know this person outside of this Slack group that I just joined like a week ago, for example, right? But right. they're willing to help and they're willing and, the, and they're absolutely posting like people's resumes, they're posting jobs. So even if you are not part of a Slack group, reach out to someone who you know, then maybe like, you know, I have a, a close mentor who, who's mentoring me in recruiting named April. And I reached out to her with my resume. And I said, you know, if anybody, you know, and she led me to some Slack groups. She's given me a lot of great advice um, and also is willing to pass my resume around, right. To like places that I don't even have visibility into. And so that's kind of um, the key. Cause like also the CEO of a couple of companies I worked at, you know, they said, Hey, anybody here that is looking for a job, you know, I've had these three different contacts. Uh, let me know if you're interested. And I was like, yeah, I'm interested in two of those. And then, so he, he, met, he sent me a text message and he's like, Hey, I'm introducing you to those people. I'll let you know if they're interested. Right. So it's just getting that network going and let them do the, like the, the lifting for you. Right. You do the heavy lifting. Sure. But like, let them do some of it. Give some of that. I hate to say burden is not a burden, but give some of that, like, uh, uh, like kind of burden to them to help you because if you have the right people in your network, they're going to help you and they're not going to expect anything in return because they just want you to be happy and find a job. Yeah. And they may find it. They may have you like, oh, yeah, our headcount just opened up. Like, yeah. we want to hire you. <laughs> Absolutely. So what would you say for our listeners would be your broke to boss tip? Uh, I think the, the best way to summarize the tip would be just have confidence in yourself um, and don't lose hope. Like, and believe in yourself. Like, truly believe in yourself because you're, what you're doing is you're, you're great at what you do. You know you're great at what you do. No matter how many jobs you've had, no matter what anyone else says, you know yourself better than anyone else. Mm -hmm. I love it. So I, I, I have to, I have to ask one question. Do you have affirmations? Sorry. Do you have any affirmations? Um, like, like, uh, could you give me an example? But yeah, like, 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 do you talk to yourself like, hey, like, look in the mirror. You're awesome today. You're. Uh, <laughs> I, I love you. You're great. You're a great recruiter. You know, whatever. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I tell myself every, like with no ego attached, I always tell myself like, you know, you're a great recruiter. Everybody you've worked with has told you so. 
you went from a junior, essentially a junior recruiter to a lead recruiter in less than four years, which is any, any profession going from a junior to lead in less than four years, you know, that's going to be something great. Like it was actually two years, but uh, just kind of reaffirming to myself that like, you've done this, you can do this. People believe in you. Like even if I don't believe in myself, there are people that literally believe in me as a recruiter that would love to work with me again. And I do that every, like almost every morning when I'm, especially when I'm down, like if I'm feeling really yeah. down, like I'll get up, go to the mirror and just kind of repeat that until I inherently believe it. Right. And then when I'm talking to other people, I don't, you know, go, oh, I'm the best recruiter you've ever seen. I'm going to be great. You know, it's like, I'll still be humble. I'll still like tell them like, yeah, I, you know, I, I, I do my job really well. I work really hard. I have a good work ethic. Uh, and then it just kind of same thing with uh, hearing it from other people also helps, right? So mm -hmm. if I do a job and they're like, oh, you're being disingenuous. You're not, you don't really want to do this. You sound like a terrible recruiter. It's like, dang, that hurt. Okay, thank you so much. You know, I, did, I call someone, I, call, I just heard this. So they go, well, that person is dumb. Don't listen to that person. <laughs> And so that's really what it is. It's just kind of not only telling yourself every day that you're great at your job, you really know what you're doing, you're going to get a job. It may just, like play the long game. Don't play the short game because the short game is just going to hurt you. But and you never know, right? You could get a job tomorrow. But just play the long game and mentally prepare yourself every day that you're going to be the best and that you are the best. And then after you get that job, you can go back to thinking you're not the best, right? You can go back to the imposter syndromes, the I, I'm terrible recruiter, whatever you want to do. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> but wait till you get that job. For now, just boost your, your personality and your confidence as much as you can. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. There was tons of actionable yeah. tips that anyone can take that is struggling to find a job. There's so much gig economy, you know, out there right now where you said like Uber, you can just do random things because you have to stay positive no matter what, you know, because people can feel that people can feel when you get desperate, your confidence gets low, they can see it. Um, and you just can't go there. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. This was awesome. We don't have time for that. Nice. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So thank you, Gregory, so much. And we'll definitely put here, if you guys need an awesome tech recruiter who used to be a badass engineer, Gregory Frank right here. Yes. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you for joining us, Gregory. This was awesome. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank Thanks you both for having me.